if I lost everything I have, that being my business, the businesses that make us money, the money we have saved up in the bank, everything we own, if we lost all of that, how would we start over as an entrepreneur again? What would we do? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the question that we're answering in this video and I know for a fact this is gonna be insanely helpful for a lot of people because I know a lot of people watching our videos are in this situation. We see the comments, we reply to every comment. There are a lot of people in this situation starting from ground zero with not many resources, no money, no knowledge really of how to get started. All they know is they want to start making their own money, they want to be able to quit their job, they want to be an entrepreneur. They want to travel, they, they, want, they want to have a sick life. Yeah, they want to be able right? to do these things. So let's start by saying, if this happened, there's no damn fucking way in hell I would ever go back. It's not like, oh well, this failed, shit. Okay, ah, that was a good run. I'll, I'll Let's start from the beginning and work my way back up the ladder. Yeah, just, like that's the only life I ever want to live. Exactly. It's so, the only thing I'd ever do. It's the only option for us. And it's not impossible to happen to us. Like, I have no. to remind myself, like, right. it, shit can, unlikely, but shit can get taken away from us. Yeah. You never know. Crazy things can happen. Yeah. Uh, but so, I am ready and prepared in case it does. Yeah. So this video will be amazing for a lot of people. I would even say like, because this is genuinely exactly, if it happened, what I would do. I'm telling you what I would do with everything that we know. So some people maybe should treat this video as like their holy Bible, if you trust us, okay? Uh, we do have some results to speak for our things, so we know what we're talking about. But let's get right into it. Uh, we broke it down into like a four phase process. Yeah. These are not steps. You can't just do one step one day, one the next day. So it's really a phase, okay? And the first two phases go hand in hand. So the first phase is to get a fucking job. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. A lot of people, I don't know, they got egos, they want to act like they don't need a job or I'm too good for a job, I don't need to work a job, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just do my own thing. Like, no, you need a fucking job and you need to work as many hours as you can. Well, it's because they know successful entrepreneurs don't have jobs right. and I want to be that, so I don't want to have a job. But, no. but they don't see that everyone went through that phase in their life. Yeah. Everyone did, yeah. literally everyone. In the beginning, you want to be a successful entrepreneur, but and you think you deserve all these things, but you have fucking nothing, so you have to do the things that you might think is peasant work, which is like having a job. So more specifically, what kind of job, okay? And we'll also talk about our own experiences in this whole process. It really comes down to getting an easy job, easy money, the easiest money that you can make. And also take the job opportunity that can pay you the most money. Yeah. Because that's the point. The only point is to save up money. That's the only purpose of this. I don't give a shit if it sucks. It's to have the most income. Mm -hmm. But there are other factors to consider as well. Like, it's gotta be easy money. Don't take a construction job, because that'll be exhausting. You can't work 60 hours at a construction job and still have energy to work on other things. Uh, so, easy jobs like being a waiter, a delivery driver, which is what both of us did. We delivered Chinese food. And that actually pays really well, because one, it's black money. You get paid uh, in cash. So I don't know if I'm allowed no to taxes. say this online, but sure. you don't pay taxes yeah. on that money. Like you just get paid in cash. That was the best job ever for what I wanted. It to was do. amazing. I got paid about twenty bucks an hour, tax free. Yeah. Work three days a week. I wish I worked as much as I could. Yeah. But that was what I could do. You make right? so much money from this mm -hmm. job. And so then there was so a lot of time where I was sitting. You know, there were no deliveries to do. So I would literally be online either reading, doing listening, work, doing listening something. Listening to podcasts and learning. That was a big one. That was the big listening one. Listening to podcasts and just gathering knowledge so, while I was working at the I time. think a delivery driver is the best possible job you can have for this. Yeah. Okay, it pays really well actually. And I want to say, like, remember that this is a temporary phase. It's going to suck. Yeah. This is not going to be a fun phase in your life. I kind of enjoy- you have to go through it. I kind of enjoy being a delivery driver. We worked at the same restaurant. Yeah, that was pretty nice. But Free food. this is a rite of passage to live the life that you want. It's not easy and awesome, like from the way beginning. The beginning, like going from nothing to something, is by far the hardest part of yeah. the process. Like when a plane takes off, that's when it gets really loud. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but other, a few other examples of jobs that are easy money, like a clerk at Walmart. Um, let's see, what's another one? I was a secretary, like just a front desk lady. I was a male, man. so I was a front desk man. Uh, at this physical therapy office, where you sit, you sign in people, you sit at a desk all day. Easy money, minimum wage, yes. You can well, even it was go like online and bucks. maybe work on stuff at the same time. Yeah. Maybe not, I don't know, but if you have that job opportunity, take it. Yeah. But bottom line, you just have to suck it up 
and get a shitty job that you don't a like just to job. make the money. Yeah. Okay. And that leads us in, unless you have any more you want to say. No. That leads us into part two or phase two. And this goes hand in hand. It happens at the same time as when you get your job. Yeah. And that's you need to do everything you can to keep expenses as low as possible. Now, the like dream scenario for you, and this is what we were really, really lucky to have, is that you can live with your parents, yeah. not pay any rent, and then not pay for food as well. Because that's what our parents did. They bought the groceries and we just ate the food in the house. If you have that opportunity, it's mind boggling how low you, you can get so your expenses. You are so lucky. You are so lucky. You can literally have zero dollars and zero cents in expenses huh. outside of like business. On like wow, your living. that's not true. No, you can. Cell phone and stuff. That's necessary. We were on mom and dad's plan. Okay. Family plan. Yeah. We didn't have any fucking expenses. Yeah. So that means, th but that means sacrificing everything. It means never ever eating out. Like if you have to pay for your own food, all groceries, it's eating shit like rice, oats, Oats, a big thing of Quaker oats for $3. That's like 25 breakfasts yeah. right there for $3. People, that's what I crazy. did. Yeah. I, not necessarily for the money purpose, that as well, but it's super healthy and all that. Yeah. Never mind that, but. Now we spend like $10 per meal, something like that, because we eat out all the time. So like that adds up, yeah. that becomes like, a thousand dollars a month in food is probably yeah. what we spend. Yeah. You get get down to like a few hundred bucks. Another great way to save shitloads of money, like let's say you need a gym membership. Our gym membership is fucking expensive. How much is it? Oh yeah, speaking of, there it is. Body, body, body Factory. Factory. Best gym in Bali. Best gym in Bali bar none. We, Maybe the best gym I've ever attended. I've been to a lot yeah. of gyms in America. It's like 120 US dollars a month. Uh, but it's it's so fucking worth it. So if you're on a budget, I wouldn't Again, go there. Again, if I but had no money, I wouldn't do that, okay? Yeah. So get like a Planet Fitness membership, $10 a month. S Boom. How do they even Sh profit? Like that. Seriously, how so do like, they profit? I have no idea. Cut fucking all your other bullshit out. No social, no, no alcohol. No beer. You're, you're, you're there's no no expensive as hell. Unless it's mom and dad's beer from the fridge and they're paying for it, alcohol is out of the question. No fucking cigarettes, no all that dumb shit. Yeah. So no social events like these are sacrifices like let's talk about what life was like for us we're going to college working a delivery job mm -hmm. and we spent every evening in our rooms working on our shit yeah. and working our job every like that's all we did now i know a lot of people have social lives and have to cut back on it we didn't have that in the first place no we didn't really have social so lives. to be honest for us it wasn't that hard of a sacrifice to make because at that time i really wasn't that type of person yeah if i, I was it would be much. tough didn't care too much about social life but we did Every Wednesday was quarter game bowling. Quarter bowling night. Quarter bowling night. That's oh, so a quarter for a game of bowling. It was yeah. it was four or five dollars plus a quarter for every game of bowling. So we played like eight games. That was my social. That was fix. every Wednesday. That was my fix with yeah. our friend Timmy. Uh, but yeah, that was like fucking all we did. So those are the two phases. You're working your job. You are working as many hours as possible. That's why the job needs to be easy, so that you can work 60 hours. Okay, which is like eight hours a day, eight times seven. Yeah, close enough. Okay, every day as much as possible, and you're spending fucking nothing, mm -hmm. like nothing. And to give, to put like a number on it, you should be saving at least bare minimum after taxes. This is the bare minimum. You do, then you're doing this right. Then you're doing a good job at this. Yeah, but this is even like this is easy. One thousand dollars. It's a not. Month. It's not easy. If you, if you can live at home. Yeah, if you live at home. If you can live at home, is that easy? If you can't live at home. Oh man, uh, student housing, something yeah. like that, shared living. Now there are a lot of people watching this that have families and stuff. That's true. And that's, all I can say is limit your expenses as much as you can. And of course, if you have kids, you really don't want to do that to them, I understand. Yeah. Um, so then maybe don't do that. But if you live on your own, you have to make that sacrifice for yourself. Yeah. You have no other choice yeah. if you actually want to do this. So at least $1,000 a month in savings. Yeah. At least bare minimum, 1500 it's 2000 possible with a minimum wage job. Zero expenses. It is. Now I'm doing the math. It is. If mom and dad are paying for rent and food, so at least one thousand though. Yeah. That'll save up ten bands in less than a year. Yeah. That's a lot of money invested into a business that like if you know how to put it to work, that's a lot of ROI. Like you can get on your feet quickly if you do this, right? But that's the foundation. And, and the job and the low expenses is the foundation. And all it comes down to is you being willing to fucking do it. Yeah. That's really all it comes Sacrifices. down to. Oh, I can't find a job. There's a job out there. You can yeah. get one. So yeah. the same with us. Like we do things. People ask, like, why do you do that? It's just a sacrifice. I don't want to do these things. But, but I, I don't want to sacrifice time with family, friends. But it's fucking. It's what I have to do. Yeah. So that, that's what people need to realize, yeah. which moves into phase three. Now these two are doing at the same time. Phase three is given 
that you're doing part phases one and two. Like, okay, we're doing this now. I have some money saved up. What's mm -hmm. next? Mm -hmm. What do I do now? A little how do, money. How do I get on to or move on into the entrepreneurship space and making yeah. my own money? Yeah, so while you're working your job, saving money, you gotta be working on your side thing. Now you don't need to start on that right from the beginning. You can do a few months on your on your own where you're just focused on work and saving up money. Save up a few grand. Two months you can save up two to four grand if you're doing this right. And then you can start working on this next thing. And what we would suggest, now it might seem obvious but not so obvious at the same time. So phase number three would be start publishing but not any kind of publishing yeah. a specific kind of publishing now yes we're a publishing channel we teach people publishing because it, we believe so much in it if you want to say something i would say if you're a new viewer and you don't know what we're talking about self-publishing is the online business that kind of brought us the yeah. life that we have now yeah. that that right? kickstarter so that's really what i suggest and we've tried a bunch of different things yeah. and after all of it publishing has by far been the by best far. overall well, we have for us. we have a video talking exactly about what makes publishing so great yeah. we have videos about that but we've tried these other ones you start with drop shipping mm -hmm. i've tried amazon fba i tried a stupid app okay we've done all these different ones publishing is so much fucking better than all of them so, okay but it's not any kind of publishing yeah so but publishing requires right. money Publishing yes. requires money, and like we just talked about before, you're trying to you make as much and save as much so you can use it to invest in the business. So you need money to invest uh, into the publishing business, but in the beginning, you don't have that much. Yeah. You can't just throw in $5,000, which would be the ideal situation. So you say publishing requires money, but that would be the traditional publishing, the one that can scale quickly. That's what I'm talking about. When you don't have any resources, you can't invest the money, so here's exactly what we do, okay? You write books yourself. Okay, now we have a video talking about this, but you can really, man, you can really make all a fuck loads of ROI when you're writing books yourself. But let me take a step back. It's not writing books yourself. It's writing audiobooks yourself. Writing audiobook manuscripts. We have a whole video talking all about this. So I will put the stupid tag thing up there if yeah. I remember. But you're able to write audiobooks that require barely any investment. The only investment that I would not do myself and that I would pay for is one narration you don't narrate your audio yourself yeah that's worth it it'll cost you about 100 to 150 bucks yeah that you just have to you don't you, narrate you have that money you yeah. saved up at least a thousand months you have that money yeah. and then cover design which will cost you like 10 to 15 dollars for an, for a great cover okay but now back to the audiobooks and exactly how I would do it so you got to create audiobook series that can be streamlined what the f do you mean? No, what do I mean? That's Watch that video. Yeah. Watch the video that we put up there. Watch that video. But here's the thing. You can create these series of audiobooks. You can create them fast. I'm talking like two a week. Like even with as much as you're working. You create two a week, which comes out to eight per month. And these can make hundreds of dollars per month individually with little monetary investment. Like, you could get on your feet really fucking quickly yeah. with this. This shit is so overlooked. So, so first, let me say what I was working on about six months ago, and then your, so this is says you've had writing your own book. I'll tell you exactly what I went through with this. Yeah. So, so right now, we've been creating a course, AA 2.0. That started about five months ago. At that point, I started writing my own books, even though I didn't need to, but I felt it was a really good use of my time. It's such a great use of your time that even when we, like, we're perfectly fine, we don't need to. We're still doing it because it's like, this shit's worth yeah, it. Yeah, so I actually us. started writing my own book, and about two days in, I was like 80, 90% done with it. And then we started making the course, so I had to shift my focus there, so I never finished the book. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I won't come back to myself. I'll let my girlfriend, one of my friends, write this book and finish it and continue this series. Mm -hmm. But I was prepared to write this book and streamline it and have make a series of we had planned out like 15, 10 to 20 yeah. in this other series. books directed to be audiobooks or yeah. specializing in audiobooks because you don't really work so well as a book. You may be wondering what the fuck are you talking about? If I told you exactly, you know exactly what I mean. We're talking strictly audiobooks. Mm -hmm. There's not ebooks are not in play here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you my own experience. Back in Hawaii last year, uh, we went through a little, you know, taxes can be really stressful. Like, oh, you don't know how much money is actually yours. I remember I was just in a stressful place financially, so I started writing some of my own books. And what I did, I won't tell you exactly what the niche was. I've told a number of people, and then they've went out and done it, and done some have done really well with it. But I created a series of audiobooks. I wrote five in five days, literally one a day for five days. Uh, and then I created two bundles out of it. So seven audiobooks were created from $2, no, sorry, from five days worth of work. 
and I'll put some screenshots on the screen. Actually, in our webinar, we use this as an example. So I'll take screenshots from that and put that up. But these seven you can see on the right hand side, the sales and the bounties that these audiobooks have made for themselves. And then there you could see the kind of numbers that I've made from these. With a $444 investment in just narration, it's done over $14,000 in profit. And I think that's in like the first eight months they were out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know the screenshots I'm putting on the screen. Uh, yeah, I have a good idea of it. But it, it should help visualize what we're talking about yeah. and like what's possible. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly how we would get started with publishing. Writing your own audiobook series that can be streamlined. Now people continue to ask, but how, how, what? Tell me what to Fuck, write. man, it's like, so I, annoying. I, I can't. I cannot just tell you because then there'll all of a sudden be 200 people doing the exact same thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, can we but give so many? Can we give we'll, some idea, like yes, we'll examples of what we're sort of talking now, about? Now, inside the course, we say these two examples. These are just random ones that we pulled out of our bag of like 30 different ideas for audiobook series that we're talking about. One is just like a geography trivia audiobook. Mm -hmm. Okay, just ha like I'm not saying don't do it, but it's just yeah, an example. example. 101 geography trivia questions, and you ask them like a hundred different questions about like. What, what's the capital of Bolivia? And then you can repeat it, and then there's a bunch of uh, elements that you can incorporate to be able to stretch your audiobook and make it really good, have a high price point, and make big royalties, all that shit. So that's just one random example. To see if it can like, maybe spark something in your brain. Another one would be uh, English pronunciation. Yeah. Again, that doesn't work at all for ebook, but just teaching ESL people, is that what it's called? E yeah. People learning English how to pronounce words yeah. so it'd be like beginners intermediate advanced this is just have different chapters for colors numbers all this shit like here's how you pronounce uh, neighborhood yeah. you spell it out and then you pronounce it some shit like that yeah, this is Think all this is all knowledge that as an English speaker in this case like you have that knowledge and that's what that's what I want to say real quick is like when it comes to these audiobooks that you're writing these manuscripts you have to think about like this it's, it's not the information, it's not the high quality information people are paying for with these audiobooks. What they're paying for is for the information to be spoken to them yeah. in audiobook format. Yeah. You can find this information online and then just have it narrated. Of course, put it into a book and then have it narrated. Huh. You don't have to be an expert yeah. or no write one, thousands of words. No like, one else is doing this shit. Uh -huh. No one else is doing this shit. We had one student who's done exactly what we're talking about and scaled their income to over 5k a month really quickly with books he In a matter himself. of a few months. Yeah, in f a few months. That so. was insane. Yeah. Um, and, and back to the geography one, that's just shit you find online, the capital of Bolivia. The fucking, wh where, where's the north equator? That doesn't make sense, yeah. but you get what I'm saying. Geography shit. So shit like that, again, the video we linked up in the corner tells you more about how to create these streamlined Children, audio book series. Children's learning books. Children's learning books. We have like, you could do so many different things. Yeah. Just be creative. And when you when you write these books, like, yeah, piano, they, it, it might piano not work lessons. out. I want to say it might not work out, but the only thing you're losing is the time you invested. Which, yeah, okay, time's valuable. Of course it is. Um, and then maybe $100 you invest into the audiobook. In the narration. Aim for something that you can write yourself in three days or less. So you can do two a week, eight a month. Fuck, you can have a big portfolio really quickly. Yeah. Okay. So with these audiobooks that you're going to be writing yourself, they're you're not gonna get rich from them okay these are not gonna make you 10 15k a month they did really well for you but that I would not expect that yeah right right these are just gonna get you off your feet so you can reinvest them and that goes yes. into phase four I mean what we just said is some of the best ROI shit I've ever seen on the internet yeah okay and no one else is doing it not a single other person will ever tell you to do this on the internet yeah okay but that's what we would do and then which leads us into phase number four let's wrap this video up because it's getting pretty long but there's a lot of good shit to say here the last phase is once you start having money from saving up for a few months, at least $1,000 a month, uh, your audiobooks that you've written yourself are doing a few thousand dollars a month. The final step is keep publishing, but now you can finally invest in a writer mm -hmm. so that you can have long books that have a lot more earning potential. We're yeah. talking, we've had, we've had audiobooks that have done over $5,000 in royalties in one month, yeah. just to give you an idea. Yeah. Um, but then you start hiring writers, and then you have this portfolio of ghostwritten books as well as your own audiobook series and then you could build a publishing business like we've done five fairies month of publishing we have students Pierre Luigi's cracked like 20k a month from publishing he has, a, he has so a many people like, just from 
from book royalties, even just audiobook royalties, you could do over ten thousand dollars a month. That's so much fucking money. Pure Luigi hasn't touched his business in three months, and he did seventeen thousand dollars in pure profit yeah. last month. It's like three months from it's three ridiculous. months of not touching it, it's like close to fifty k or something like That's that. That's ridiculous. It's mind boggling. The numbers. lifestyle that he can live now, yeah. a lavish lifestyle. Yeah. But the last step is you have some money, start publishing like when you invest, you're, you're hiring people to write your descriptions, you're hiring people to do all these things, and then you can really fucking scale. Yeah. Now our whole channel is about phase four in this, yeah. how to make money with publishing. So there's really not much more to say on that. Mm -hmm. It's really the first three phases that are kind of key here. Mm -hmm. There's something I also want to address is, this is how I want to wrap up this video. Okay. When is the right time to quit your job yeah. in this situation? Because being the way I am, I hate jobs with a passion. And I quit my job at one point, and I'm guessing you probably hate as well. You might get to a point where your online business is everything, and you're only making your own money. So when is the right time to quit your job? Yeah. Right? So there is one right answer to it's, this. It's simple. It's very simple. It's, very, it's when your time is better spent working on your publishing. Yeah. When, when your, your job is losing you money, in terms of like, I'd be making more money working at home on my books, that's when you quit your job. Yeah. Now, when that kicks in exactly at what income level with publishing uh, depends, depends on you. Depends on your income level. It might be at expense level. As early as 2K, like yeah. things are going well. Fuck, I should just be writing all fucking day. Yeah. It might be at like 5K, it might be even at 10K if you have high expenses. Yeah. But I am not an advocate of like quitting your job until you are like financially stable. Yeah. Cause the last thing you want to be is desperate for money and then you make irrational financial decisions and and then something that happens way, and then something happens and now you lost your online yeah, income. Yeah. And being that way in business, desperate for money is the worst thing ever. Yeah. You need to have financial abundance. Then you're gonna make really bad decisions. Yeah. That's do why. things that will not that yeah. will not help you in the long run. That's why we've invested these past six months creating one course while doing like no <laughs> other promotion, not making any extra money while we could have. Because we didn't need to. We were not we we're in abundance and it's gonna pay off in the long run. But that's basically fucking everything. That's exactly what both of us would do if we lost everything and had to start over from scratch. I that's would, literally what the fuck I would do. I would I'd move, move back home, home with my parents and I'd get a job. To New Jersey, I'd ring up where I used to work with the Chinese delivery, I'd be like, bring me back fam. I'm like this is really embarrassing that here I am again, but, but fuck it, it is what it is. I'm I'm gonna yeah. suck it up. Yeah and just do what I have to do. So comment down below what you think. Uh, would you do the same? Do you agree? All that shit. Just give us some thoughts. And final thing is the magic emoji. Last video we it, had no magic. Yeah? yeah, last it's video back. I said no magic emoji. Cause I'm sorry, I've been a bit frustrated recently. People watch our videos to the end, hundreds, but only like a handful of people actually drop the magic emoji. Yeah. That means if you watch the video to the end, you spam the magic emoji. So in honor of bringing it back, let's do the, the magic emoji. Emoji. Okay, fine. The magic glow ball. Okay, okay. spam that shit below if you watch to the end. Drop a comment as well. Uh, Dane, our camera guy wants to say something. What's up, Dane? Say no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no,